Welcome to the Texas Instruments OMAP 3530 and OMAP 3503 Developers Series, Module 4. In this module, we will download an OMAP 3530, OMAP 3503 Linux kernel file system and U-Boot bootloader, all three available as open source. We will then cross-compile both U-Boot and the Linux kernel. We'll start by downloading the different packages that we need to rebuild, uh, starting with the Linux kernel that will run on the OMAP device, as well as file system. We'll start here in Firefox at opensource.ti.com. I'm going to go to this first link, the OMAP Linux community, and software downloads. We see this third item here, OMAP 3530 Evaluation Module for the Broad Market. So if I click there, it'll take me down to this section. You see I can download Kernel, File System, Bootloader, which is U-Boot, and the Tool Chain, or a evaluation copy of the Tool Chain. So I'll start with the Kernel. Once the Kernel downloads, go back. Download the file system. You can see here they have a few uh, different versions. I'm just going to do right here uh, ext2 would normally be for a hard disk drive, jffs2 for flash. I'm going to download this one, just the, the root file system.tar.bzip, sort of a general purpose. Then the bootloader, uboot. Here I can scroll down on the code sorcery page and compile for ARM Cortex A8 under GNU Linux. The host platform will be GNU Linux as well. And I'm not going to worry about downloading the source code for the, the GNU tool chain. Now that those downloads are finished, let's go back to terminal. Here's the various packages that we've downloaded, and I'm going to install the ARM tools into the op directory first. So let's move this into slash opt. And then here in the user directory, I'm going to, the home DSL directory, I'm going to make dir omap. So let's move uboot to omap, move the root file system to omap. Move the kernel to OMAP. So if I go down to the op directory, we can tar zip extract file uh, this arm tar. Oops, we're going to want to use the J option instead of the Z. So tar JXF, J is for the bzip2. Once that's done unpacking, we can see there's a new directory here, arm 2007q1. And note that there's two directories here that have binaries. The first is just called bin. And it has all of the standard build tools preceded by arm nun linux gnu abi. There's also this directory arm nun linux gnu abi. And if we list that and then bin, you see that it's got a lot of the same tools, but without that prefix. I would suggest that in your path variable, you use the, the former, uh, the one that is preceded by the prefix, uh, so as to not confuse this with the other version of GCC tools that you have on the system, which are the x86 tools. So what we can do is use the VI editor to edit, uh, tilde just means home directory dot bash rc. This is the setup file for the bash terminal. I've already typed in the relevant line so as not to make a typo. So export path equals says that we're going to set the path environment variable. We're adding slash op slash arm 2007q1 slash bin, which is the path to the tools. Now that that's done, I can hit escape, colon Q, exit out of the bash shell. And now when you restart another bash shell, you say echo dollar sign path. 
You should see opt arm 2007 q1 bin at the beginning. Once we've installed the cross compiler, we can now rebuild the kernel. So if we cd into OMAP, which is where we put our downloaded files, we can start by unzipping these. So I use the tar 2.6 kernel. For the root file system, I need JXF because it's been zipped using bzip. And then back to ZXF for the U-boot. Now if you look in the OMAP getting started guide, uh, what you'll find is you need to rebuild U-boot before you can rebuild the kernel. The reason for this is that U-boot has a utility called make image that allows you to make a U-boot style image. Basically it, it puts a header on a binary image that U-Boot recognizes. And so we're going to have to rebuild U-Boot so that we have that tool available to us. And what I like to do is go ahead and make a script. Um, so I'm going to create a script called build.sh. The reason for this is we're going to have a couple options that we want to put in here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and open up a second X shell that we can look at. So I go into OMAP U-Boot, and we VI the make file. You see that there's an environment variable called cross underscore compile. This allows us to specify into the make file a cross compiler. The second is you see that there's also an environment variable called arch, which stands for architecture. Uh, so we're going to want to specify arch equals arm. And if you go searching through, uh, you'll find that there is a config file called omap3evm-config. And so the first thing we do is this command, which will configure uBoot with the default configuration for the omap3evm. So what that will do, the first command will configure uBoot, the second will actually build uBoot. Escape, colon W to right, Q to quit. Now we need to change mode A plus X on the file build.sh. So everybody can now execute build.sh. And we can run. So I can go back up and go into Linux. Go down a couple levels. And here's a very similar make file structure for the Linux kernel. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to edit a file called build.sh. And this make file takes the same cross compile variable. And for the kernel, just to make things a little different, so omap3 evm config, it's omap3 evm def config for default configuration. And this is an optional step, but I'm going to go ahead and put in a call to menu config. What this will do is bring up a menu so that once we've imported the default configuration, uh, you could then go through if you want and adjust that via menu. And then finally, we put in make U image. What that will do is make the, the U image version of the Linux kernel. Final thing that we're going to do, the U image that gets built is going to be put into arch arm boot and it will be called U image. almost forgot the first step that we wanted to do uh, in this script is go ahead and add to the path variable this home DSL OMAP U boot tools so that it knows where to find the make image utility. Once that's done we can write and quit. First thing I want to do is make the TFTP boot so we don't get an error on that. Then again, we can change mode, all plus execute, build.sh. And now run build.sh. This is the portion where it's taking the default configuration and importing basically the default configuration. Now it just ran the make menu config. I'm going to exit out of the menu without actually changing anything. So we're taking the default configuration. At this point, uh, we have begun actually building the Linux kernel.